Hey, ya uh, YouTubers, Tazman here, bringing you another episode of Fantasy Grounds Unity from the ground up. And in our last episode, we talked a lot of, in the last three episodes, we've talked a whole lot about this guy right here. We went into options on the last one. Uh, we're going to kind of great we're gonna glaze over all these other buttons and then I think what we're gonna do is uh, I'd like to either maybe we'll create a character or create a couple characters like four of them three of them something like that uh, maybe some to give us like a fighter class uh, or you know your tank your DPS and your healing support um, but anyway and then maybe what we'll do is do um, uh, the adventure or at least start the adventure uh, Harried in Hillsfar and maybe we could even look into how you could do your own campaign and stuff like that I'd love to know what you guys think uh, so to begin with uh, we're just going to talk about the combat tracker is one of the next bread and butters of this system so obviously we talked about the chat window and the dice and how all this stuff inter, inter uh, connects the combat tracker is basically what keeps track of your initiative, it keeps track of how wounded you are, how wounded the enemies are, whose turn it is, I guess that counts as initiative, um, what, what spells and attacks and all that stuff, it, it keeps track of everything, it keeps track of uh, your, your uh, NPCs, your friendlies, your uh, faction NPCs, your neutral characters and your hostile characters. It keeps track of the rounds. It keeps it, it just keeps track of boatloads of stuff, and it is definitely a great staple in um, fantasy grounds. Um, and like I said, we could go over every little tiny bit of this uh, right now, but I think if we get it in the scenario where you're actually looking and seeing it being used, it's going to be more meaningful. Uh, the next thing we have is the party sheet and there's a difference between the party sheet that the DM well there's even a difference the, uh, the, the tracker if we go look at the combat tracker real quick in a uh, player screen you'll see that it has considerably less uh, it talks about your hit points your temporary hit points and your wounds or you know how many wound points you have then it'll also have your character um, and some really basic information about them. Uh, the party sheet is kind of the same. You'll notice here that this party sheet, you'll see that on the side there's two tabs. There's one called inventory and there's one called other. So, um, or order, not other, sorry. <laughs> so what the inventory one is keeping track of is when you complete tasks or you loot bodies or you find chests and you find items and stuff like that that is all kept track in the parcel so you'll have the coins kept track in here and you'll also have the items kept track in here you can see that uh, the the DM or GM will drop parcels and and the party treasures and all that stuff in here and then they can be assigned out to the characters which we'll talk about later however in the GM version you see we have considerably more we actually have four tabs we have this first one called the main and the main is very handy um, and it's kinda hard to see here but this will actually list everyone that's in the party it'll give real basic stats on their hit dice their HP their strength dex con int their intelligence wisdom charisma you also have their um, armor class their uh, like passive perception those are all their abilities and then their defenses and senses so that would say they have dark vision and so on and so forth and then of course they have your name race class and level so it gives you a little quick gooey layout of all these different things but one really nice thing about this that doesn't get utilized way too much by by GMs that I know of is it has these other components here like the abilities so let's say you have a group and I can't really show you it because we don't have any party members but that's okay we'll, we'll get there uh, but what you can do is you can actually do group roles for different things such as ability checks you know if everyone is pushing on a door taking turn pushing on a door 
you can say, okay, uh, this door's DC is 15, and then you could say um, it's going to take strength, and then you have the option of, with all these, saying show the results to the characters or hide them. Now, I don't think this is going to do anything. Maybe it'll just roll one dice as a generic thing, but we don't have any characters in here, so that's kind of interesting to see. And sure enough, we just get an error saying, what are you, stupid? There are no characters to do it with. Um, so what you can do is you can do ability checks. You can do uh, saves, such as constitution save. Just come in here, change the constitution, and say, oh, it's a, a DC of 10. Anyone lower than 10 fails their constitution. Uh, there are skill checks, such as you know um, perception, stealth, survival. So, you know, if uh, they're going through a swamp or something like that, you could say, okay, well, there's, there's various traps in this swamp. And you could say you have to roll a 15 or higher in order not to fail or fall into a swamp. And then there's also the attack where you can have a group attack. This one probably is used the least, but here you would put um, the AC of the thing that they're attacking. And generally, people like to roll their own uh, attacks, you know. Um, they, they like to roll all these things, but sometimes, like if they go into a poison cloud, it's just quicker to say, okay, well, you guys just got in a poison cloud, let's see who gets sick, who doesn't. So that is this, and like I said, be patient with this. We're gonna glaze over these buttons up, up top and really quickly over the buttons on the side but then we're gonna actually start creating we'll create those three characters um, and then we'll actually kinda play an adventure uh, Harried in Hillsfire um, which I already have and I've made extra graphics for and everything else so it should be good so that's pretty much the main tab on here the next one is the inventory now you did see that on the other um, characters uh, on the player screen so here you can see uh, you have your coin types, uh, copper, silver, uh, electrum, gold, and platinum. You can add additional ones if you want. You can remove, like if you don't want electrum, you can remove that from the equation completely. Um, you also, when you get parcels, we might be, well, I don't know how much we can do of this. But um, when you are doing quests and stuff, uh, let's see, oh, we have Harriet in here. So let's say we do this quest of demon goats, right? So it has a parcel of 150 gold piece. If there were pieces, uh, if there were items, they would also be in here. And then all I'd have to do is drag this up into this window up in here somewhere, and it would automatically put the gold here and the items there. The players then can actually take these things and drag them to their character sheets. Uh, this will just be an overall character sh uh, inventory of everybody in the party. It'll let you know. And this is the inventory or the party coins. How All the different characters and how much coin they have. Um, if you have things that maybe they end up not wanting, say there's like a map case, you know. Um, you can actually sell it. You could say that, that, you know, they sold it to a vendor. And that's what this percentage right here is. This is how much the vendor will actually buy it for. So let's say I have something that is says it's worth four gold pieces, right? Uh, just some kind of junk item. No one wanted it. They just want to sell it to the vendor. Well, because it's not brand new, the vendor's obviously going to buy it at a discount so that they can turn around and sell it at regular price or something, or maybe a slight discount. They still need to make a profit. So this is how much they'll actually buy it for. So for example, if we had our thing here that was for four gold, that means if after everyone's divvied it out, I can click on this button and it will sell everything that's left here that is sellable and it will put the things in the right spot. But it will also do it at 50% off. So for example, with that four gold, that means they'll get two gold in here for that item and then the item just goes away then once again once we're done with all that and we have got all this we can click on this guy which distributes uh, distributes the assignments because it's really hard to see right now but this you can assign who gets what um, 
but you can uh, have it distributed out and it'll distribute it so if there's 400 gold pieces and there's four party members they each get 100 if there's 403 gold pieces uh, then what would happen is it would distribute uh, 100 to each of them and leave three gold pieces here it's not quite smart enough to say okay I could turn those gold pieces into you know electrum silver copper it just simply leaves them there saying it does not go evenly and then once again it'll also do that with this the next tab that we looked at over here was the order tab if we remember did we actually go into it no we didn't so the order tab this is where you're going to keep track of your watch order so at night time uh, you know who's going to take first watch second watch third watch fourth watch and it will keep track of that also the marching order um, this is just like a little drawing tablet area and you can actually put your player tokens on here and it will actually um, allow them to move them you know say the tanks up front and the DPS is kinda off here and the the healers over here so you can do that you can also as the DM or as the uh, player you can actually come in here and well I don't think I think it won't let me do it if I don't have a player on there but you can actually draw on it so like if you're drawing a really crude I can show you real quick like uh, in Harried and Hillsfar um, there's a part where you are kinda escorting a wagon so you might come in here and actually it might not even do it here either because it didn't change to a pencil icon no <laughs> and maybe that maybe there's something else I have to do or like I said this is early access and it might be a feature that's still being worked on so we don't know um, anyway I don't seem to be able to do it right now this last tab for the GM is called the XP tab and this is XP that you get so for example if we come into encounters didn't mean to do that one but if we come into encounters for example and we say eh, let's let's just grab a random counter down here um, how about this so here you can see we have an encounter that is four nulls and we might need to calculate the XP and the CR level. So as you can see there's four nulls that are in this encounter and the CR level for the encounter is 2 and the XP is 4, 400. So if I were to take this after they beat these nulls and, and uh, win then what I can do is simply drag the encounter I itself over to here and it will automatically uh, divvy out or put the XP um, in here and it will mark it as you can see it says AW this means has it been awarded it'll be a little uh, option that triggers on or off and you can actually say it's been awarded and what it'll do once again it'll have all your characters up here and it'll divvy out between say four characters 100 XP each this also works with quests. I don't know that there's any official quests in anything I have loaded, but it's the same type of thing. You might have a quest that says, you know, you get this much XP if you complete this quest. You drag it to this area, does the exact same thing. When you want to award it, the, once they're all gathered here, you just click award and it'll award it to the party members. I'm sure if I do this, we'll get another error because we don't have any party members. Or it just does nothing. <laughs> okay so these are the two big ones uh, that I needed to go in a little bit of depth just so you understand some of the basics of them but not so much because we don't have characters made yet uh, this next one is the calendar and it will not function unless you have let's go into modules and type cal unless you have the calendars module enabled or you have a different kind of calendars module it won't work but you can actually do this for uh, you can use the Gregorian calendar, you can use a um, Forgotten Realms calendar, I can't remember what it's called, but you know it has all the funky, you know, where some of the months only have like one or two days. Um, so you could do that. Uh, the next button that we're looking at right here is the colors one. Now this isn't colors for the entire screen and stuff, and this works both for player and DM what this actually changes is the colors of your dice 
So we come in here and look at, say, our player here. And let's just give them maybe a darker purple dice. So if we come here, we can see colors. So the way it works is this is the color you have represented down here. You can add a lot of blue, eh, medium amount of blue, or a little blue. You can add a lot of red, medium amount of red, and so on and so forth. So you get your RGB values. Then you also get your darkness, your your lighter and darker. And then this simply changes it from black numbers to white numbers. So depending on the color you're going for. So for example, if we wanted more purple, we just kind of click that up and maybe, I don't know, does green go into purple? No, I don't seem to. That's a super dark purple. Maybe something like that. Maybe lighten it up a hair. Uh, so then once, then you could, uh, you know, darken it. You could lighten it and you could change the numbers so you can barely see them. Yes, by the way, you can make absolutely black dice with black numbers. Uh, and I believe you can also make absolute white dice with white numbers if you so desire. I mean, whether you can actually see the values right here or not, it will show you the values in the chat window. Uh, the next one is one that players don't use way too much, uh, but they might uh, here and there, is the modifier. So this is kind of an expanded version of this, where, for example, let's say we're doing damage, we did critical, what this will do is, I don't think it'll work without, yeah, it's not going to work just with that. Uh, but what, what it will do is allow you to click the different things, and it will automatically apply it to your attack rolls or you know whatever you need so damage and attack rolls so for example if it's a if it's someone in cover or you're in cover this would automatically either add two or five if it's cover or superior cover you're looking at cover is like a plus two uh, and the superior cover is plus five you can also say oh i'm gonna i don't know if this will work let's see if this will work half the damage three no, see, because these aren't considered damage, these are just dice being thrown out there. It's, it's not actually giving us any values. And there are other modifiers that uh, the DM might be able to put in here. Um, then also there's effects. So these are things that you could apply onto yourself if they happen. Generally it's the GM that is actually doing this. See how I keep switching flawlessly from GM to DM? <laughs> I will do that. So you might have an unconscious and basically you would just drag this on top of your character. If you do it out here it'll just simply say effect. It'll just tell you what it is. It's not actually applying it anywhere. Uh, and right now it can apply it anywhere anyway because we don't have any characters. So those are kind of the little buttons. We already went over the options which is uh, all the stuff we went over. If you want to know what all the different options are, you can actually go to the wiki for Fantasy Grounds and it actually gives a pretty good description of everything. Uh, let's go back over to the GM one real quick because we already have all the things. So character, this is where your characters will be, uh, the ones that you click to select and to be. Notes is for taking notes, uh, some good thing to note, to note about notes. <laughs> so. Anytime you see this little plus minus, it means edit. Um, if you if it's gray, it means that you're not in edit mode. If it's red, it means you're in edit mode. So as you can see here, I can add a note. Um, I can sh make notes public. I can share them with specific people, and I can lock them so that they they uh, are protected from being edited. Um, I can give it a name. This whoops whoops whoops. This is the name, something like that. Um, the owner obviously is going to be me up front. If I just do public, this means any player can see it. Uh, if I want only specific players to see it, then I can simply take the eye for the note, drag it on top of the character that I want to share it with, and only they will be able to see it. And it will reflect in here saying that it'll be an S, I believe, and if I mouse over it, it will say that character's name. So. Um, uh, that's kind of notes and then once again you want to delete it anytime delete usually you'll see this little thing you actually click it twice the first time is to say yes I absolutely do want to delete it because once it's gone it's gone 
So that is notes. Image and maps is where all your different images and maps will be. Kind of makes sense, right? Uh, so here we have an Air Croca from probably the player's handbook. Nope, from the monster manual. You also have things such as maps. Um, let's just look up map. So here we go with maps. We have death map. There you go. Um, and you can pull those up. Once again, you can add maps. You can delete maps uh, and all that. Um, you might have picked this up. I'm not 100% sure if I've said it before. But where this group is, this is where you find the sorting for a group. For example, if I wanted only images and maps related to Harriet and Hillsfar, I would just click on that and now we have just everything related to Harry Hillsfar. This also works with your tables. Um, tables are like your, you know, ideals and flaws. We went kind of over those. But once again, if there's one specific to Harry and Hillsfar and I only want to show those ones, then I would come in here and I would click on Harry with Hillsfar. But obviously it doesn't look like there is one. Uh, story. This is we, we talked a little bit about this. This is, uh, once again, here we go, Harriet and Hills Fire. This one will definitely have it. This is all the story components uh, for the thing. So if you start at the very beginning, uh, it will give you like your uh, table of contents. You can click on the next page to go to the next page. And one thing you'll notice when you go to the next page, oops, this is unlocked. That's why I can't move it very easy. Wait, hello, there we go. Uh, so you'll notice one thing is that it's just that one box. If I go back and actually click on credits, this actually opens up a whole new window. So depending on, you know, if it's something you want to always keep the table of contents up, uh, but uh, you only want this up temporarily while you read it, uh, then you might want to just click the thing. Other words, you can just click on this and it'll go through the individual components piece by piece. Inside here, we talked about this also, to send text to the main chat, you just click on the little bubble. These are the parts generally you read. Uh, things like this are more notable things. If we go in here, you'll notice that now we're in farmhouse part of mission one. This is the birth part of mission one. Um, so it'll just, like I said, go one by one. It'll, you'll also find things like this, which will be maps. And then you can share the map by, and I think did we do that? Oh, no, we didn't do that here. But you can share the map with the players by saying that. And now if we go over to our player, you'll actually see that our player has the map. Uh, I did mention, though, that uh, you can use this little thing over here to scroll around the map. Or you can middle click to scroll around the map. If you hold control, you'll see this turns into binoculars. Uh, and what that does is if you left click that zoom right there but if you're not in that window and you left click you actually can change the size of any window once again with fantasy grounds it only lets you change from the right side the bottom and the right bottom diagonal corner and then you can either move it here like this by clicking on that and moving it this uh, binoculars, of course, means zoom. Uh, but you can also zoom with the mouse wheel. You can middle click to move the map inside. And uh, right click, of course, brings up all your different options. We're, once again, not going to go way in too far into those because we um, will be going in those later. So you'll notice here also, now if I go to image maps, it does say that it is shared publicly. If the DM wants to no longer share that, all they have to do is come in here, uh, go to the images and maps, and you'll see here it says it's shared. If I click on it, now it's no longer shared. And you'll see over here that they no longer have any maps available to them. All right, let's continue on. Uh, the rest of these buttons. So we have the quest. We kind of talked about those. Um, once again, Quest, like everything else, has the group where you can sort it by module or whatever. Uh, NPCs, this uh, is all NPCs. The NPCs, you'll notice here that we have, you know, seven pages of NPCs in our 
our DM side. Uh, however, if we go into the player side and look at NPCs, uh, they actually don't have any because they don't have any books loaded or anything. Let's let's load up a book or two real quick. So let's just go ahead and do the player's handbook. Actually, I think that's all we need. And wait and wait and wait. Um, Harriet and Hills Fire, you'll notice, isn't here. Uh, we will want these guys all loaded. So let's just load up these guys up to right here. These are modules that make creating a character much, much easier and much, much more convenient. So now if we go into NPC here, uh, there will be a difference. Go back to all. So now you can see we actually have uh, NPCs, but um, there's only the one page. And this is because these are more like uh, wild shape type NPCs uh, for druids. Not quite sure why a zombie is listed here, but uh, that's kind of interesting. Uh, but most of these things will be like shapes that the druid can actually form into, like the unidentified creature, which is nothing. <laughs> so anyway, uh, those are your NPCs. Um, go back in here. So encounters, we talked about that and we are definitely going to be going into much more detail in the near future with that. Items is all items in the game. Um, it's like your armor, your weapons. In fact, it has all these things up top uh, that kind of tell you about it. So you have armor, weapons, templates. These are special things that uh, might be... <clears throat> we have to wait a minute. There we go. So templates are, are things like ammunition plus two or something like that, um, where they're kind of above the standard thing. They're like uh, bracers of archery. Um, and then you actually have this new button that's called the forge. Uh, the forge will actually allow you to merge two things. So you could take a piece of an equipment and a magic item template, and it will actually combine them and make a new item based off of those two items or those two things, the, the weapon or armor and the template. So really cool stuff there. Um, once again, you have these options for searching. You have your basic options. You have whether it needs to be attuned to. You have the rarity, you know, is it is it a common item? Is it very rare? Is it legendary? Uh, so on and so forth. And then you also have type. Is it like adventure gear, armor, mounts, potion, ring, scroll, blah, 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 wondrous items, so on and so forth. So you can always sort by those things and do searches for those type of things to see what you can find. Once again, there is an edit list because you can basically anything in this game can be created. You could, you could uh, use the 5e rules and all that stuff and actually create your own monsters or NPCs, your own weapons, armor. You could basically, if you can think it, you can do it. You could create your own spells. You could add new skills and everything to the game uh, for a homebrew. All right, let's continue on. Next, we have parcels. We talked about those. Those are kind of treasures that you get. Backgrounds, this is part of your class. I think we kind of went over... No, we didn't. That was in another video that I've done. So uh, backgrounds are all your different backgrounds for your different uh, your different characters, player characters that they create. Uh, classes is, you know, fighter, uh, barbarian, cleric, druid, monk, uh, warlock, sorcerer, wizard, things along those lines. And then, of course, races are races such as, you know, dwarf, elf, gnome, halfling, goliath, uh, kobold, orc, so on and so forth, tabaxi. Um, feats are special things that characters, a variant human I know gets them right up front, however uh, other characters get them at different levels. I think first time is at level four. You can either get uh, two attribute points or you can choose a feat. And then you can come in here and choose these feats. Once again, all these things you just drag 
over to your character sheet and uh oh can I not close you <laughs> can I close it here yes I can good uh, actually did that have a thing I know that they were working let's try this again share sheet nope that's not what I wanted um, but you can uh, choose your different feats and there's there's a fair amount if you want to know what they are you just click the eye and it will give you more information sharpshooter gives you all the information you need um, so that is that next we have skills this one kind of seems pointless to me but I guess if you create your own skills uh, for example if you wanted to do uh, locksmith or something like that you could actually add that in here as a skill that everyone can see uh, instead of just your character itself because you can actually set it up so the skills and such are actually what's on your character wow we're almost out of time but we're finishing up and finally we have spells these are all the spells in the game and lots of these modules that we were just listing those Rob 2e ones uh, actually count as spells or probably better way to say it as powers and those are actually these right here there's the class features feats race traits spells um, these are all things that help you immensely in creating your character so uh, that is that we already talked about assets and library so I think that pretty much covers a quick oh no it doesn't actually I lied um, last thing we're gonna go over is this right here this is the hot bar and this hot bar is much more than meets the eye so it looks like you have 12 things that you can set hotkeys to what can you set hotkeys to I think we actually kinda did it where we took a die and we right clicked on it four times like it changed the color because I'm actually the same person <laughs> and you can place it in there uh, and then anytime I want to roll those four die, I just click on it like that and boom, that's all I have to do. Or I can hit F1. Each of these act as your function keys. So if I hit F1, you see it rolls all four die. Now, that might be a little hard to understand seeing just little squares. So you can also come in here and edit the label and say 4D6 or something along those lines. Hit enter and then it will leave it there all the different little eyes that we've been seeing for example let's say well that's a great example right there let's say we have a wizard uh, we can actually put those down here as well so now where if I wanted to go look at a wizard and this wasn't all the way down I'd have to come in here scroll down click on this and pull up the wizard and look what I look at what I want to look at for there here now I can just hit F6 and boom there's the wizard if I want to link the image to the wizard so I can always see that now I can hit F7 and there's our picture of a wizard to get rid of them if you're like hey, I really didn't want that you can just click on the little right click and then click on the clear slot and boom it's gone or you could just drag something else on top this works great for maps for example our demon goats one we did we could replace wizard with demon goats and then anytime we click on that and there's our demon goats map um, so anywhere that you have those those items you know where you can actually uh, move the little eye you can actually put them down here I believe you can also like if we did the remember how we did our slash oh now I gotta remember it 4d6 reroll one and or drop lowest uh, what was it d1 so we do that we can actually take this text and drag it on there as well and then anytime we click on it if I did it right oh look we got a we got a one we got a one again we got a five so here you can see we actually rolled a 17 in all five is actually the lowest that's actually a really good roll uh, so you can actually do that with these two and if I wanted to make this more just changing the label is not going to change the actual value of that thing so if I say uh, roll attribs -T -T and then hit enter 
even though I've changed the label, it still has its same functionality. So it actually separates that. So very handy stuff. Now, you might think that 12 might not be enough, and uh, our friends at SmiteWorks uh, felt the same way. So what you can do is if you hold C, for the control key down, you'll actually see it turns into C1 through C12. So if I hold control and hit F1, that would automatically trigger this one. If I hold Alt, you'll see it turns into A1 through A12. Shift is S1 through S12. But then you can also do all the different combinations of that. You could go Control and Shift. You do Control and Alt. You could do Alt and Shift. You do Alt and Control. You could do Shift and Control. And finally, you could also do Shift, Control, Alt. So you actually have a, a ton of, of uh, hotkeys down here that you can use. All right, guys. So I think that does it for this. In the next episode, uh, we will probably start creating three in the next few episodes. We're going to create three characters. We're going to use the Rob 2E stuff to make it a little easier and make it so those characters are a little more functionable. Uh, but I hope you enjoyed. If you did, be sure to leave a thumbs up down below. Aside from that, comment, like, and subscribe. Follow me on Twitter. Check out my Discord and my other channels. And don't forget about my great big game giveaway. When I reach 1,000 subs on my YouTube channel, I'm giving away 57 Steam games. That averages out to be one out of every 20 subs will get a Steam game. That's pretty good. And that's it. So be sure to tell all your friends, neighbors, family, enemies, you know, I don't care. You tell everyone you know to check out my channel. If they like it, they can sub and we'll be one step closer to the great big game giveaway. And that is it, my friends. Until next time. I'll be seeing you later. Bye.